if I was watching this video, I would like it. I would like the video and I would probably subscribe because this is so thoroughly entertaining and also well executed. It's a, it's not a request. Good morning, everybody. Sorry that I am late. <laughs> I was having some annoying technical difficulties this morning <laughs> with the camera. So um, before I get too far ahead, can you let me know if you hear me okay? Am I coming through? Am I having more technical difficulties that I don't want to bother with? <laughs> that would be fantastic. So just let me know if you can hear me okay. Because um, that would be embarrassing. Let's see here. <clears throat> okay, Phil says that he can hear me. Excellent. Good morning, by the way. Um, happy day before Easter. Is there a special title for today? I don't know. But you can see I'm wearing my little Easter hat. Got my little bunny ears on top. I got this. Uh, I'm slightly blurry. Probably. I wouldn't doubt it. Might want to just keep it that way. Um, <laughs> smooths out the face. Uh, but I got this hat at Walmart a couple of months ago. like Because, of course, Easter and every holiday, they always bring out all of the holiday stuff before the holiday even before anybody's anticipating the holidays. <laughs> so, uh, I got this and I saw the little bunny ears and I just had to have it. Isn't that cute? It's great. But again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your patience. It really is a pet peeve of mine to start late, but we're here now and that's all that matters. That's all that matters. It's all good. You um, may have noticed, some of you, that... Um... Oh my gosh. My mouse just died. <laughs> it's going to be one of those days, guys. I'm having a Monday here today. That's okay. So you may have noticed, some of you, that the thumbnail changed for today's show. And that is because um, Arwen Avalon is not is not going to be with us today. It's so sad. It's so sad. Um, it's due to uh, some unforeseen circumstances. She was ready to go this morning. And then something happened. And uh, she was not able to to come. And I thought, okay, I could just I could just cancel the stream. But I thought it'd be more fun to just kind of hang out anyway. Um, so again, thank you so much for being here, even though <laughs> things aren't quite going according to plan. That's all right. Just want to say hello to some of you that are here. Of course, I already said hello to Phil. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> and then Zake Rot. Am I saying that correctly? Three fifteen. Good morning, Mrs. R two. The icky. And I see JT Gunter was here. I don't think he's here anymore. But JT, always good to see you. Pleasure, sir. Have a great rest of the day. And educate Rogue on Snorks. Yeah, we were talking about that on Twitter this morning. I know what Snorks are. Does anybody else in the chat know what Snorks are? So curious. Come along with the Snorks. You know, Snorks. <laughs> Does anybody know what Snorks are? Uh, TD is in there. Hello, TD. And uh, my mom, I see you. Little Spidey, good morning. Good to see you. Of course, got little Spidey's uh, beautiful picture of Boba Fett, his painting over here. Love looking at that thing. So talented, so talented. Here we go. I think I've caught up with everyone. Krista Geek is here. Thank you for being here. Good to see you. Here we go. Let me just catch up. At least I didn't start 15 minutes backstage. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, I I had everything going and then, well, you know what? I'm not even going to talk about it. It's in the past. As Elsa would say, the past is in the past. And we're just, imagine we're holding a pen and let it go. So today's project is a little bit uh, different. Oh, So Chris says he remembers the snorks. Excellent show. I I like that show a lot. It was kind of weird, kind of quirky. I think JT said something like, or maybe it was somebody else said it was a Smurfs underwater, something like that. <laughs> kind of. A lot of those cartoons had similarities to them. Anyway, man, I really wish my mouse worked. Um, we're going to go ahead and get into our project. And I forgot to bring the original here. One second, guys. My deepest apologies been like a little bit of a crazy morning getting everything together but let me let me step out of my office
And good morning to Drunk 3PO. He says, we have a bunny hat. Yes, I do. I have my little, little, little bunny hat here. Um, so I'm going to be painting Easter Snoopy and Woodstock today. I created this painting. For those that don't know, I am a art teacher, an art teacher on a platform called OutSchool, and I teach kids how to paint uh, pretty much like in a Zoom chat. And uh, we have a lot of fun. I teach all kinds of stuff. And this was one of my newer ones. And I thought today, since things aren't quite going according to plan, and it's Easter, I'm just going to have fun and paint Sir, Sir Snoopy and his little friend Woodstock over here. So I'll set this aside. Got all my colors prepped and ready. We're just going to go ahead and jump over to see if this will work. Here we go. Let me straighten this up a little bit here. And again, thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Even though we got started late, you guys are the best. You are the bee's knees. Here we go. I'm going to skip some of the stuff that I normally do just because of the fact that my student isn't here today. So I got all my brushes, got my handy dandy cup of water and my rag, got my beautiful selection of Easter colors going on here. And I just thought we would hang out this morning and chit chat. So let me. So here we go. So I'm just going to be starting with the background, of course. Of course, we're starting with the background. It'd be foolish to start any other way. Um, but we're going to do grass here on the bottom. I'm going to be taking my first one inch flat brush, my favoriteest brush to start with. It's really just to paint anything. You can do so much with a flat brush. I feel like it's an underrated brush. So that's why I use it all the time. And I'm going to be dipping into my green here. Just kind of back and forth. And what's really cool about acrylic paint, number one, it dries quickly. So that's nice. And I'm just going to do kind of a wave pattern here to create the illusion of texture. Yes, yes, because everything when it comes to painting is an illusion, making you believe you're seeing something when it's just a bunch of colors splashed across a surface area, which I think is pretty magical. Tell me it's not magical that colors can make you feel things. Um, but anyway, what's really cool about acrylic paint is the fact that since it dries so quickly, depending on how your brush stroke pattern is, you can um, layer it. So that way it looks like you almost like you have two different colors going on at one time. Good morning, Rulon. Hope you're having a nice day. So it looks right here like I have two different tones of green, but it's just that I layered the paint unevenly and it just creates this nice texture, illusion of texture of grass. I went walking yesterday and I love grass. <laughs> <laughs> surprise to anybody who knows me. So not only trees, but I love grass. I love nature, but I like beautifully well manicured yards, the kind that you get to see the patterns, of course, the patterns in the grass and um, walked past this one yard. And I mean, it just looked like velvet, green velvet. It's like, yes, this is the way grass was meant to be. And uh, so I like trying to do that with my acrylic paint as well. Sometimes when I'm creating the brush stroke pattern with the for the grass, you can see here uneven, and that's perfect. There's no wrong way to paint nature. There are good and better ways to do things. There's no wrong way because nature's kind of wonky in and of itself. So here we go. I'm just kind of creating those rolling green hills in the background here for Sir Snoopy. Just happy, happy, happy Easter morning. I love water and turtles. Yes. Who doesn't like turtles? Turtles are cute. And water, well, is essential. <laughs> I love water myself. I'm done with my grass here, so I'm going to put my brush into my cup of water and swizzle it about. I don't really understand people who don't like drinking water because they say it tastes weird because water doesn't have its flavor, so I don't really understand that. Hey, Latino Slan. Hey, Polly. Good to see you. And Lauren Masters, they make good ninjas. 
Turtles, they do, <laughs> don't they? Surprisingly, you would think something so bulky would, would not be very good at being discreet and quiet, but um, Phil says, I saw three turtles in person the other day. That's right, I saw a video where he saw a turtle. I had a snapping turtle in the backyard. I did not realize those things could run as quickly as this one did. It totally shocked me. Uh, it was buried halfway in the ground in the mud. And I was mowing the yard and I came past it. And I jumped off that thing. I was like, oh my gosh, look at that. And as I got closer, that thing scrambled out of the mud and shot into the woods. <laughs> I'd never seen anything like that before. Always under the impression that they were slow creatures. Not this guy. Not this guy. Oh, I have forgotten to get my yellow. By the way, if you're ever wanting to start out painting and you don't know what supplies um, to use, don't overthink it. Don't stress it. Just get some basic stuff. When I do my acrylic painting, um, I, I don't use fancy stuff. Right here, I have apple, apple barrel. Let me go over here. Very cheap, very affordable. You can get it at Walmart. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Between that or Craft Smart, here we go. Um, either way, it's totally fine. Just need something to start with. That's all. Oh, and I was going to pour out my yellow paint. I was surprised how fast the turtle ran as well. Isn't that crazy, Phil? We're all under this impression that they're very slow moving creatures, which they are. They'll take you by surprise. I love drinking water, especially from Lidl. Oh, I didn't know Lidl uh, sold water. Wait, why wouldn't they? I mean, everybody sells water. Uh, I, I love water. Water is my absolute favorite beverage in the world. It just is. Um, some water tastes better than others for whatever reason, but I love water. Yes, absolutely. Um, as a lot of people know, I was born in the States. I was born in Central America. And um, the babies would get, when they were born, they'd actually have little glass bottles of water that they would feed, well, I say feed, but give to the babies. And um, so it's just like right out of the bat, I've always been drinking water. <laughs> that just hasn't changed except for coffee. Yeah, all right. I let this dry a little bit. That's why I was talking and rambling. Plus, just hanging out. Hope you're having a good day again. But I didn't want my blue, which I'm about to use to create my magical sky here, to mingle with the green. So nice and dry. Doesn't take long, especially when you have um, even layers of, of paint and they're nice and thin. And again, it kind of looks already like rolling hills. So I'm going to take my secondary flat brush here and I'm going to do two toning. My favorite thing to do in the world blending having two colors or two paints as it were on the brush at the same time because i just love to blend 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 so i'm going to dip it into my blue over here flip it over dip into my white and create some clouds Hey, Kaylee, good to see you. Good morning. Happy Easter. For Again, for those that don't know, I was supposed to have the lovely, the magnificent, the beautiful Arwen Avalon on today, but something uh, happened this morning that she didn't anticipate, and so we're going to have to reschedule. So stick around, hopefully, for that. Please be sure to like and subscribe so you can get all the cool stuff that's coming up this way. Thank you for everybody that has subscribed. I've surpassed to 400 subscribers, which is totally awesome and crazy and cool. Um, but yeah, so it's just me today. It's just me in the chat. Hope that's okay. We'll just carry on. If you have any questions for me about artwork or anything, or myself in general, I would say I'd be happy to answer, but depends on the questions. <laughs> But I'm just going to continue with this rolling pattern here. Uh, nice, graceful movements with my sky. Just careful to have the blue butt up against the green. Look at that. So lovely. Phil says, I guess we'll survive. Yes, you're stuck with me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Trust me. I would have preferred to have Arwen on here and not just hang out by myself. But life happens. Life happens. 
It's okay. I'm glad she's okay. Here we go. I'm just going to go back and forth. Watch what the colors do. Hey, Keely and Gary Lehman. Hello. Here we go. We are painting Easter Snoopy today with some Woodstock friends. Okay. Just get this across, get some more blue. So I'll have different tints of blue. I was telling somebody the other day how colors are so fascinating and we, we tend to generalize everything because we, we are not in the know. And um, I was just talking about colors that if you have black and white, which technically speaking are not colors, they are the absence of color, that the names for things, the descriptions change. So for example, blue, if you happen to have like pure blue, that of course is a color, um, but it's just blue, right? And then when you add white to it, it becomes a tint, right? Comes a tint. If you add black to it, it becomes a shade, which is pretty easy to remember. Black, darkness, shade, all that cool stuff. Um, but they're different. People tend to just say, well, that shade of blue. If, if it's not, if it doesn't have any black in it, it's not a shade of blue. It's a tint of blue. <laughs> um, I don't know why, but even though I knew Tabitha was painting Easter Snoopy, I thought she was going to slip up and say, I'm painting Easter Santa. <laughs> I don't know why you would think that, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> uh, and Latino Slant, Polly says, 25 ounces every morning before coffee. I'm assuming that's water. Um, <laughs> yes, that's a good idea. I have a giant jug of water I like to drink from. <laughs> but yeah, colors are really interesting. If you have... You know, we have our primary colors, which are blue, red, and yellow. These are the colors we need to create all colors. And then, of course, black and white to help change the way they look. But if you, people say it's a certain hue of whatever. If you mix a primary color um, and have black and white in there, it no longer becomes a hue. Or it is no longer a hue. Hue is only mixtures of colors stemming from the primary colors. So no matter how much you might mix red and green and blue and all that stuff, it, it will always be a hue. But as soon as you add black or white, they become tints and shades of that variation. But we don't, nobody, nobody really cares. <laughs> so nobody knows and nobody talks about it. I'm trying to get some more white in here. I want some more clouds. And I think, again, what's also magical about artwork and especially drawing or painting colors like this, just to how peaceful things look, how just the certain colors that you use and the brush strokes that you use, you can literally create tranquility or chaos. And again, tell me that's not magic. Tell me that's not magic on earth here. And so we're creating the illusion of motion here as well. It's not just a stagnant background. It's not just some basic blue sky. Of course not. Of course not. Whenever I paint, I can't just have simple. There's got to be blends in there somewhere. Good morning, Road Disney. We're talking about snorks. Just to let you know. We're not talking about snorks. Because um, Rogue doesn't know what a snork is. So sad. But good to have you here. I'm just picking on you. <laughs> Resin Bell says, my best friend love Snoopy, so this will be fun to try. Absolutely. You know, so that being the case, I thought about um, including the colors in the supply list prior to, um, to the show, the stream. So that way, if people wanted to, they could paint along. So if that's something that you're interested in, please let me know. And you can always follow me on Twitter at Dreaming Tabitha. Pretty consistent here. It's always the same. You can follow me on Dreaming Tabitha, um, where I'll update you on my um, next live streams. And I will be starting to put the supply list 
in the announcement. So that way, if you want to paint along with me, we can do that. I think that would be fun. And I would love that if you did that, you would post your finished project so we could kind of see all it, see everybody grow together, see how all that works. That would be fun. Go. Now I'm able to go back over what I just painted down here and fix things because I'm only using blue and white. Whenever you're using just two paints, it's easier to fix anything. Um, it's not very complicated. So easier to fix. Once you start introducing a third color, that's when things get a little tricky. Not impossible, but definitely time consuming. Whenever I paint this picture, I, I don't know about you guys, like if you remember back in the day, okay, I was too busy with good shows. Hey, Snorks is a good show. Okay, no, no hate. <laughs> um, but back in the day when you would get a Windows computer, there used to be, I hear people talk about it, the picture of the perfect meadow that would be, um, that would be your desktop screensaver. In fact, let me see if I can find that really quickly. I'm, well, I'll, let me finish my sky. And that's what this picture always reminds me. It's like the perfect, I mean, it's like heaven. Just the perfect, <laughs> the perfect place to just sit and stare at nothing and be happy. Let me finish this here. Got my rolling sky. It always, skies always look different too whenever I paint this. I purposely do not intend for this to be exact replica of what my original looked like. Where's the fun in that? Right? It's, again, that's that magic because nature's always moving. It's always doing something. Okay, let me, I want some more white down here before I move on. Because you can't mess up clouds. They have no exact shape. They're always on the move. They're always seeing new people and doing new things. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. <laughs> I'm mad at you, Disney, for not knowing what a snork is. <laughs> uh, I was too busy. Who's cuter, the art or the artist? <laughs> I think it's because of my bunny ears. Um, my hat, yes. Did you see my hat? I have little bunny ears. <laughs> uh, Tabitha, my favorite peanut. Peppermint Patty. I I think Peppermint Patty is hilarious. I love the way she just interacts with everybody. Just so serious and just expressing her thoughts all the time. And just the way she says Charlie Brown's name. Um, let's see. I think I'm done with this guy since it's not our main portion for today. Let me find this meadow. Do you guys have a favorite Peanut? Peanuts gang member? Um, of course I like Snoopy and everything. But I just always got the biggest kick out of Peppermint Patty. The biscuits? Mm -mm, I don't think I'm familiar with what the biscuits are. If you would like to explain, I'd be happy to learn. Wait, is that just all rabbit butts? No, there are heads and feet included. Um, let's see. Drunk 3PO says pig pen and so does Rogue Disney. That's interesting. Any particular reason why pig pen? Let's see, windows, meadow. Let me see if I can find the one. Um, oh no, where is it? It used to come up like it was right there. The perfect meadow, perfect sky, the perfect saturation and composition. Like there was nothing Let's see, he was just about to type pig pen as well. What is what is it with the pig pen? Like he didn't really say much. Does is there a particular reason everybody's got a fancy for for pig pen? Um, Linus was cute too. I did like Linus. Is Peppermint Patty a girl or a boy? It's a girl. <laughs> she was the first girl, if I'm not mistaken, in um, in the Peanuts gang to wear pants. 
<clears throat> and uh, she's just pretty laid back. You know, Peppermint Patty, I mean, her name is Patty. So, it's a girl. <laughs> oh, this is infuriating. Where is it? It used to come up right away. Well, let's give my background a chance to dry. Now, did you guys, now, you can just say what you want to say, but um, it wasn't until a couple of years ago that I discovered what breed of dog Snoopy was. I just never paid attention. Um, I was never curious about it. Just thought he was a cartoon dog. Oh, here it is. Um, I did not know until a couple of years ago he was a beagle. Sorry. He didn't look like a beagle to me, so I just didn't think of him as a beagle. <laughs> as a kid, mine was Peppermint Patty. Uh, favorite at the time, I was loving anything peppermints. Interesting, Phil. You have very interesting ways of, of, of gravitating towards, or reasons for gravitating towards rotating towards things. Biscuits were tiny dog type creatures, like a mix of Ewoks and Native Americans. They had cool biscuits. Oh, they had cool tortoise, bear, eagle, totem pole. Biscuits. Are you called I thought that was called pom pom bears. Is that what we're talking about? When I was little, my family carved some land out um, by hand, and there were dirt mound everywhere we played in. My stepdad said, I took off running in a cloud of dust, and that earned me the nickname. Oh, I like a good story. Um, that's funny. <laughs> Interesting. Well, here, guys, I'm going to show you really quickly. This was the the meadow back uh, screensaver, or excuse me, wallpaper. The perfect meadow. Just look at that. Like you could just sit there forever. <laughs> Does anybody remember this screen, this desktop cover? Because <laughs> I do. I was just so in love with this place. I'm like, it's there. I just want to sleep and sit and live there. <laughs> now you've got me curious about this biscuits thing. Let me look at that too. I want to make sure that my background is nice and dry because of the fact that we're about to paint Sir Snoopy on here. And because he is white, I don't want any of the pigment from my colors here to lift into the white. I don't want a greenish sickly looking Snoopy nor a blue one. Let me look at this name. Let me go back up here. Biscuit Bears, is that what you said? Biz Kits. Oh, okay. No, I am not familiar with these. Biz Kits. Absolutely not. One of my favorite cartoons to watch in the mornings or even the afternoons, whenever, was, um, does anybody remember Pound Puppies? I liked Pound Puppies. I actually had a whole bunch of Pound Puppies. Latino Slant says Charlie. I guess Charlie Brown was his favorite Peanuts member. You should look them up on YouTube. I can't believe I'm the only one who knows about them. I think they were made by the same studio. That, yeah, they made so many different cartoons. It's kind of hard to keep up. I love the concept of Pigpen. Um, he told Charlie, you know what I am? I'm a dust magnet. That acknowledgement of life was so profound for five-year-old me. It's cute. All right, let me touch this gingerly here. Still a little cool to the touch. Not quite ready. Not quite ready. So, But I mean, like, companies like Hanna-Barbera just made a myriad of cartoons that, I mean... And a lot of those cartoons were like off, like the different companies. They made off-brand versions of things. Like So you had Scooby-Doo, right? And then you had Jabberjaw. And you had Josie and the Pussycats. And they were all pretty much just off-brand versions of Scooby-Doo. Um, because you had, you know, your group of people and the animal that um, was, you know, like the comic relief or whatever like that. I like Jabberjaw. Okay, so the thing is here with Sir Snoopy, sometimes in my classes and on the live streams, I will include a stencil. Today, we're going out on a limb here, and we are doing Snoopy freehand. 
And I'm just going to show you guys some really basic steps in order to get characters. This is, of course, a very simple cartoon, um, which is why that I also chose to have a little bit more of a complicated, complicated background, a little bit more interesting of a background. So that way it amplifies Snoopy. It also helps with the feel, the presence of that tranquility, that beautiful spring day that we're going for here. And... Um, kind of helps draw attention to Snoopy. It's not so complicated a background that it takes away from him because of course he is starch white uh, in comparison to the background. So we've got some contrast here. And because he's such a simple cartoon, it just it just works nicely this way. But yeah, we're gonna freehand Snoopy here, show you some steps that if you're attempting to do any kind of artwork for yourself, don't be too afraid. It's difficult to know where to start. And that's what we're going to do with our background here. I remember Pound Puppies, but I don't think I ever watched it. I watched a lot of Garfield and Heathcliff though. Yes, Pound Puppies, I liked Pound Puppies a lot. So if you're not familiar with Pound Puppies, I mean, as the name suggests, is it about dogs? And they lived in a pound and uh, my memory is a little bit obscure on this, but that they solved problems. They had like an underground um, facility or whatever underneath of the pound and they would um, if, if need arise arose rather they would go into the facility under underneath and uh, go fix problems and things like that it was just a cute cartoon I love the stuffed animals I still have some to this day favorite cartoons on Saturday morning Popeye I did watch Popeye as well. I, I watched a lot of those older cartoons, not very many of the newer ones. I think like after the era of Powerpuff Girls, <laughs> um, I didn't watch quite as many cartoons. Um, just was. So Pound Puppies were pretty much Mystery Inc., but in a pound, I guess you could say that. I love pound puppies. I collected them. I wish I still had them. I know Mrs. R2. Like they were so they were so sad. They were so sad. <laughs> they were so cute though. Wait, they bought pound puppy puppies back in 2010. I had heard some rumors about like maybe bringing pound puppies back, but it's not going to be the same. You guys know. We all know. That if they bring back something, it's just never going to be the same. There's just not it's just not the same. I loved Powerpuff Girls as a kid. I didn't love them, but I thought they were cute and they were fun. All right. Feeling we're ready. I'm going to I'm just going to wet my brush here just because my white paint. Normally I don't encourage people to dip their paint brushes into um, water. This is something that you kind of feel out as you get more experience. But um, knowing that my uh, white paint has been sitting over here resting and congealing whilst it waits for me, I just dip a little bit of the tip water. Go get some white paint. So how we start, if you're ever curious about starting um, characters, animals, and uh, Dread Saber Phil, good to see you. Uh, sorry that Dan called you Dread Sober Phil the other day. <laughs> Is that a floof Dora, bunny floof Dora? <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. I call it fun. Um, so characters, we tend to get overwhelmed by all of the details that come with creating faces and bodies and, and you know, humans, animals, all this stuff, break it down to its most basic shape. And I know that we all want to be the chosen one and not have to do that. And we could just like easily create something off the bat. But as I had to recognize for myself, it doesn't work that way. You need a place to start, and then you can go off the wall with uh, proportions and everything like that. <laughs> she called me. I, I I didn't call you old. I didn't call you old, Polly. <laughs> um, I just have to throw this out here that he did karaoke night the other week, and I just happened to like slip in and see it. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. I'd never even thought about people using YouTube for karaoke. That was so cool. But he has a great voice, by the way. Do you ever worry about bringing your own style into other characters? I worry that, I, yeah, do I ever worry that about bringing? I don't worry about bringing it. I worry that I don't bring it. Um, 
because everybody, like all artists try to find their style, their flair, and we tend to get stressed out about it. Like, what is my style? What makes my picture unique and all this kind of stuff? Um, that comes just with experience. Like as you start drawing, as you start painting and sculpting and whatever medium you're using, it will naturally come out. And you, unfortunately, you have to copy other people just to learn how to do things in, before you can even start seeing your own style. I'm not exactly sure. Like you can see, well, you, oh, my mouse doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work. You can see in the back here, like, you know, I have my chibis and I've done my paintings and things like that. And for those that follow me on my channel and see my artwork on Twitter and Instagram, um, I'm not really sure what my style is. I don't really know in my own artwork what makes my stuff my stuff. Um, but I, do, I try not to worry about it anymore. I think that what makes mine a little bit different is my attention to blending. But that could just be my perception. I have no idea. I just wait for people to tell me and try not to worry about it. It's one of the things that drives you crazy and you just can't focus on it. But I try to bring my own style. Like blending right here. Normally, if you're going to do the Peanuts Gang, you're not doing this. It's just solid. And I have to do this. Like I do. All of my classes that I teach on OutSchool, I have to have blending somewhere. I can't do basic. Anyway, so starting with my half inch brush dipping into my white, all that I'm going to do <clears throat> in order to, excuse me, to start doing character of Snoopy, break it down to its basic shape. Let me bring up Snoopy one more time here. Again, we can kind of get overwhelmed with all the shapes, the proportions, the details. But if you really think about it, Snoopy is just a stick with a bunch of other sticks on him. Place to start. And a lot of sculptors, when they first start doing their stuff, they just start off with, like, they draw out the shape and then bend their wire to that. So kind of give that idea. So let me go ahead and start with that and stop talking and doing. Try to get this centered here. I wanna make sure that Snoopy's feet are in the grass so he's not just kind of levitating in the air. So I start down here to guarantee that he's in the grass. And I'm just gonna make a line like this. Nothing fancy, not perfect, just a line. But this tells me I have the spine. And then I'm just going to make another line here, pretty much a capital T. I'm going to make one side a little longer. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is the basics of Snoopy. A clothes hanger or clothesline out in the backyard. If he levitates in the air, he must be strong in the force. Oh, a Jedi Snoopy would be really cute. Um, the crossover we did not know that we needed. So this is our basic shape. This will help us know how to proportion everything else. Does Is the head too high? Is the body too long? We can kind of work around that. I personally, my instincts are telling, my spidey sensors are telling me that the head is too high. So I know I need to have it quite large. So I'm just going to come underneath and make a new line see how I feel about that. And I'm a little more confident about this sizing, this distance here. Then I'm just going to fill it in. So we're going to do a teardrop shape. <laughs> and then fill that in because we can always make it bigger and all that later on. And I just am always amazed how the slightest detail can change the whole outcome of a painting, which is why I tell people do not give up on your artwork until it's finished because it, it really does have a habit of all coming together in the end. Little bumps and bruises along the way. I'm gonna make like a jelly bean, which is perfect for Easter, like a jelly bean shape here for his head. It's going to kind of turn into a little mushroom here. Here in the beginning. 
Not going to be anything special. Not yet. I've already can see that I have, I don't want to say I messed up, but I have created a shape that I don't prefer up here. But I'm not worried about it because I know he's going to look like Snoopy anyway. As long as it is recognizable and it's what you were aiming for, even if it's not perfect, especially if it's your first time, totally fine. You can only get better the more that you do. I always tell people, you guys, a lot of you are gamers out there. It's XP points. So you might not get it right the first time. You do it again. You've got the experience. You know what to do, what not to do. So this doesn't look like much right now. Like I said, it's kind of like a weird mush, uh, yeah, mushroom. <clears throat> because one tiny detail is missing, which is the bump that indicates his forehead. There we go. And it does so much. Am I painting Woodstock too? I am painting wee Woodstock over there. I make Woodstock a little chubbier because I think he's cuter when he's fatter. Um, I know he's quite a string bean, but I think he, a little, little fat, a little full belly. I mean, it's Easter. Maybe he's loaded up on peeps and stuff like that. He is, you are great. Let me see here. <clears throat> Excuse me. You are great at identifying birds. That's pretty cool. I can, I can identify a handful. A handful of birds. Orioles, um, obviously cardinals, blue jays, uh, blue jays, titmice, um, bluebirds, um, sometimes jangos, uh, owls, <laughs> falcons. Okay, but look at that. That already makes a huge difference here. Just that little bit of the forehead. And I can still see some of the blue peeking through, so I'm going to cover all that up again later on. But this is our basics for Snoopy, like those two little steps, and then we added. Got to head out, starting Easter dinner and breakfast prep. Bye, everyone. Bye, Rogue. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate that. Uh, Kaylee says it's already starting to look like Snoopy, right? That, just that little bump. Like, don't you know, don't get discouraged when you, when you start and it's not quite coming together. You'd be surprised what that tiny little detail will do. So we're going to give him some, some arms here. Just let all this dry. He's a happy Snoopy. Got some arms up in the air like he don't care. I hope you have a happy Easter rogue, by the way. And everybody else, too. And sometimes, you know, if you're not paying attention... Uh, happy Snoopy. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not quite focused like today, right now on your artwork, it, things change, you know, concentration is key. So maybe if I was painting this and not reading the chat and talking and stuff like that, I would have been, had a better body shape. But again, I'm, I'm not worried because it's going to look like Snoopy. If you show me a pic and ask me what it is, I'm like, yep, that's a bird. <laughs> okay. All right. I think birds are beautiful. I like the tropical ones, but I'm not fond of when they fly really close to me. Like it just freaks me out. We used to have like parakeets and things like that. And our friends all had parakeets growing up because we were in the jungle and <laughs> they fly close to you. And I just, I don't like that. I don't like that. Keep your distance. All right. Try to change this. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and make some, some legs here. <laughs> Snoopy is weird. <laughs> That's okay. He'll be all right. His body is like way too long. That's okay. I guess I could make his head bigger, but I'm just going to stick with what I said so that I can show you Canadian bear <laughs> Um. Good morning again, JT. Canadian bear. <laughs> I laugh every time. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <clears throat> and we're going to do some more jelly beans for feet. Because we are walking. Oh, 
No. It's so humbling doing these streams, guys. You have no idea. Because like most artists, you have a vision of what you want to paint, what you want it to look like. And when it doesn't quite come together and a bunch of people are watching you, you just kind of try not to withdraw into yourself and be like, this sucks. <laughs> this doesn't suck. I'm just being real with you. It's just I can see where my mistakes are and I'm like, you just roll with it. Because again, I want you to be able to see that just because... Just because you can do art, number one, doesn't mean you don't make mistakes. And secondly, just kind of see where it goes. Sometimes they're happy accidents, like our man Bob Ross always says. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and just shellac. Now that I've got pretty much all of Snoopy's body on here, minus his fingers, I'm going to go ahead and just put a nice coat over here. So I don't see the blue peeking through. Does anybody have, <clears throat> thank you guys, does anybody have a favorite Easter tradition? I like hearing these things. I love, I love different backgrounds of people, you know, especially if you're here in the United States, but even in other parts of the world, like if you celebrate Easter, do you have a favorite tradition? Something you grew up with. Um, as many people know, my mom is from Germany. And um, I don't know if any other culture does this. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. But my grandmother would hang this branch, this beautiful, crazy, corkscrewed branch. I mean, like talking kinky curls branch, like up in the doorway. And then they would hang decorations, like little wooden, little tiny wooden Easter bunnies and Easter eggs. And um, then they would have actual eggs. Um, hand painted, like detailed eggs and things like that, and hang them from the branch. And uh, that was done for Easter. And it's always so beautiful. So we don't we don't have that kind of um, branch here where I live. <clears throat> Actually, anywhere we've ever lived, I don't think we've ever found a branch like that. But my mom will buy like pussy willows, like uh, or or get them outside if she has them, and hang the eggs and things like that off of there. That's just fun. It's different. I don't see a lot of people doing it here, so I'm going to guess it's not really an American thing. Um, so that's one of my favorites. Just, just that little bit of decoration. I love Easter egg hunts. Okay. I know I'm an adult, but like, I love me an Easter egg hunt. <laughs> I miss those. I'm going to rinse this brush out. I no longer need it. Let's see here. JT says he's Likes painting eggs with his kid. That's awesome. Yeah, it's quality time. It's fun. It's memories. Kaylee says, I usually hang out with my family, my aunt and uncle that aren't too far away. We sometimes would make Easter cookies. Yeah. Phil says, sadly, hadn't celebrated Easter much. Well, you know, so a lot of times our holidays, because they come every year, um, sometimes the traditions can get old and stale. And so you... You try to find ways to mix it up, maybe. Um, Phil, go buy an Easter bunny, is what JT says. Yeah, maybe do something quirky. Go get your picture taken. I could totally see Phil getting his picture taken with the Easter bunny. Like, just go back and down. <laughs> that would be fun. Um, yeah. yeah. We, we often had, you know, special activities um, at church growing up. And so, yeah, we'd have Easter egg hunts and uh, special cookies and things like that. So um, it's something silly, I guess, but I always looked forward to when I was little Easter Sunday, because a lot of people would save their money. And once a year, you know, once a year buy that Easter outfit. And so it was just always exciting. It was almost like going to some kind of uh, red carpet event, if you will, to see all the beautiful colors and to see what everybody wore, because it was such a special occasion that everybody, I say everybody, but pretty much everybody bought an Easter outfit and just all the happy colors, you know, like our colors that we're using today. Um, it's not really a true, like my own tradition, but it was definitely something that I really looked forward to. I have no idea what I'm wearing for Easter. I have not bought an outfit for Easter in like five years. So maybe I'll just rewear it. <laughs> I'd be like, it's brand new. Um, 
So while Snoopy is over here drying, I'm going to quickly put his fingers on and then maneuver my way over to Woodstock, guaranteeing me that this will be nice and dry by the time that Woodstock is finished himself. So we're going to be bouncing back and forth a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and put some, some fingers on this dog. You know, uh, he only has four, so that makes it pretty easy. And I just, I love the family aspect of Easter. You know, people do, they, like Kaylee was saying, go hang out with her aunt and uncle. It's great. You know, go over to grandma's house or maybe your mom would make dinner. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you need to switch up the traditions and sometimes you need to take on the mantle. Like maybe your mom or your aunt doesn't do it anymore. They just, they got tired because they've been doing it for 15 plus years or more. Maybe it's time, you know, you decide to say, hey, don't worry about, don't worry about the, the ham or whatever you eat. I'll do it this year. Um, and people get excited about that too, because it's like you're carrying on the tradition. You're not letting it die. That happens so often anymore. People are just not, they're just not continuing it on. They just let it go by the wayside. And these are really valuable memories and, and traditions, like I said to pass along to future generations. At one point, we all have to like kind of step up and be the ones, cause you know, people get old. Family members aren't always here. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm laughing, not, that's not funny. I'm sorry, I'm looking at my Snoopy and I'm just laughing. That's okay, we'll make it. I'm gonna get some yellow and some white just to thicken it up a little bit here. And just pretty much recreate Woodstock like I did the way I did Snoopy. And he's just going to be smaller. So I'm going to put him over here. I'm going to I'm gonna make him a little bit bigger for the screen's sake. But just start off with a capital T. I'm eating at Golden Corral. Sunday. Wish me luck. Have yeah. There you go. Gosh, I can't remember the last time I was at a Golden Girl. <laughs> it's got to be like over ten years. It's perfect. Well, thank you. It's not done yet. It's not done yet, so it can't be perfect. People get old, man. I am doomed. Then <laughs> I'm sorry, Phil. If nobody told you the facts about life, um. People get old. <laughs> okay. Make a little chubby Woodstock. Because why not? I'll just pretend this is one of Snoopy's brothers. He has like 12 brothers and sisters, doesn't he? I live about 15 minutes away from Golden Corral. I don't even think we have one around here. I don't know. Make my little shroom over here, my yellow shroom. I am so happy this morning. It was kind of cloudy and yicky outside. The sun has come out. <laughs> it's been over 10 years for me also. Good luck. I'm getting old, but not as old as everyone thinks Legion is. I know, right? JT. It's so funny. Um, I'll just keep my comments to myself. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. Will you be on his stream this evening, JT? Just curious. You don't have to answer that if you don't want to. I don't even know what the topics are for this evening. Um, plus, I don't know if I'll be able to be there. We have, we're having something a little different, something I'm not accustomed to. We are having, um, at my church, we're having like an Easter meal for the church tonight. It's an Easter celebration. So instead of doing all day church tomorrow, we're just going to have a morning service, but we're having a fellowship today. So that'd be mighty tasty.
I enjoy the fellowships at the church. Um, Pro tip. You want to have a good time. You want to enjoy church. You want to get to know people. Do not just stay in the sanctuary and sit on the pew and or whatever chair, whatever kind of seating arrangement you have at your church. Get in the kitchen. Okay. Get in the kitchen when you can't. That, my friends, is where the real fun is because um, that's where people's true colors come out. And it's hilarious. <laughs> like, Family's in town, so can't make it tonight. I understand. But yeah, I have the best time in the kitchen. I'm going to put that little bump up here and make it look more like Woodstock here. The best time in the kitchen. I always like, the pastor's like, I need volunteers to help serve or bring food. I mean, like, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. Um. And it's not like I want to miss out on the main service because you have to, um, if you're going to help serve in the kitchen and stuff like that, you really don't get to be a part of the church service. Get in the kitchen, yes. <laughs> exactly. I know. As soon as I said that, I'm like, get in the kitchen. That's all right. Um, you have the best time. So it's not like I'm trying to skip church. I'll just be real with you guys. It's not like I'm trying to skip church services. It's just that it's just so much fun. You have to be in the kitchen earlier, like before church lets out, because you have to get everything prepped. And it's just hilarious. Just so hilarious. Like people get stressed out about stuff and then they just start laughing because you're like, well, this is how it is. Uh, they don't want me in the kitchen. Look, you might not need to cook. Most of the time um, I'm just helping serve. And it's hilarious. And if you do it right, depending on what church you go to, the rules should be the workers get to eat first. Because they're going to be so busy. <laughs> they're going to be so busy serving and, and helping and everything like that. There's no time to eat afterwards. So, hey, Alan, press place. Streaming studios. Hello. We are painting Snoopy. I am talking about getting in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> JT says I would burn down the kitchen. Again, I don't, I don't do the cooking. I can cook. But the food's already made. Like a lot of times we'll have like potluck or the church will... Um, uh, cater, cater. Um, so we just, we're there to serve, to make sure that portions go out evenly. People aren't being greedy, you know, you know, kids aren't stealing 10 donuts and one chicken leg or something like this. Um, so it's fun. You make some really great friends and stuff like that. So like I said, if you, maybe you're struggling, maybe you're like going to a church and the experience isn't all that great because you don't know anybody. Volunteer for the kitchen. You will make friends very quickly. <laughs> Good times. All right. Sir Woodstock is pretty much done. Nice little blotch of cheese over here. <laughs> and uh, Snoopy's pretty dry. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead. I'll steal the 10 donuts. Yeah, I, I've had to keep an eye on some of the children there. I'd be like, where is your parent? And sometimes we have kids that um, that come on the bus and they don't have uh, necessarily a guardian with them. So the church looks out for them and we can see them going over there like, uh, my mom's not here, so I'm going to steal like eight brownies. No. Go get some green beans. <clears throat> Go get some whatever people bring. <laughs> That's good stuff. All right. I'm going to switch over to a smaller detail brush here. Um Actually, one second. I've jumped ahead of myself. I'm going to go back over to this one, slight bigger. And I'm going to go ahead and put the bunny ears on Snoopy. I just realized I haven't painted Snoopy's real ears on. So, just go do that first really quickly. Pretend like I didn't forget something really important. You know what's interesting about Charles Schultz's style with Snoopy and the gang? It's just the use of color and shapes. These ears are so strange to me. I copied this off of something I found on Pinterest. Yeah, I do kind of modify things so that way I'm not totally um, <laughs> ripping it off. But like these ears, look at these ears. They're weird. He looks like a cow. <laughs> um, but it works. When he, you watch the cartoon, when he's dancing and doing all that stuff, this is what it looks like. And then the coloring I thought was really bizarre. 
because he doesn't fill in the ear and and he leaves little gaps and things like that. I find that very peculiar, but it works. <clears throat> Easter cow, exactly. Like right now, he looks like a marshmallow cow for sure. Does anybody actually like peeps? I am cur curious. Press play, Dreaming Studios. I'm glad that you're lurking while you're at work just because it's always a pleasure. Hope you're having a good day. I really do. And I appreciate you so much for being here. I really do. I appreciate everybody coming. It's like always bewildering to me. I really appreciate it. Um, I do have a lineup for next month of who I'm going to be having teaching. I'm going to continue on teaching YouTubers how to paint. As I said for, before, for those that might be new here, kind of jumped on later. I was meant to have Arwen Avalon on today, but something came up and she wasn't able to make it. So we just decided to, I say we, I don't know who we is. Um, it must be the other people in my head. But <laughs> I decided to just paint Snoopy and Woodstock today just to carry on. Peeps, yes, TD, from time to time. Peeps, I like peeps. But like one. I can't handle a lot of sugar. I used to. I used to. I used to be able to eat like two or three at a time. But I just don't eat that much sugar. Like eat that many sweets anymore. Unless maybe it's chocolate. But even then it's minimal. And so when I eat one now, it's like, it's even like um, soda. I just typically drink water and coffee. So when I have soda, it's like, wow, I can drink like half. Um, I see, let's see. Drunk 3PO says that he loves Peeps. Do you have a favorite flavor of Peeps? Because they've got some crazy ones out here. Chris says, I like Peeps. Now there are so many different flavors. Yes. Um, <clears throat> not really fond of the cotton candy. I kind of like more of a traditional one. But let me tell you, like I could, I would love, it's going to sound crazy. I would love a barbecue flavored Peep. I know. Gross. Tabitha, what are you saying? I'm just, I think it would be amazing <laughs> A barbecue, like kind of like a Pringles chip, but marshmallow form. I think that would taste really good. <laughs> Drunk 3PO says, I would like to be on. Well, look for the invite. Chocolate bunnies. Yes, I do love the chocolate. I'm not particular about my chocolate. I have, I mean, like, I don't get me wrong. I like highfalutin chocolate, but I'll eat ch Hershey's. I don't care. I'm just like, I like it. Uh, the pull in the wee, the venom and wee. <laughs> yes, I don't know. Bears like all pe bears like all peeps. Peeps are nasty. Kelly, Kaylee, I understand. Yeah, I mean it's just like weird gelatin. Alan says hate peeps, but they make me smile when you put them in the mi microwave. Jacob Ironside, good morning, happy Easter. Glad you're here. Uh, true, they're really sugary. Yes, I've never, Phil, never had a peep. Does he even go here? Um, <laughs> I can't wait to eat chocolate Easter cow this year. <laughs> you have a sad life, Phil. Jay says regular peeps. Yeah. I do like the, the sour ones. Like they're, I don't know what company... But the water, like the sour watermelon ones, I love sour candy. Like, I want it to burn my tongue. Like, I want, I love warheads. Like, give me the warheads. Barbecue, yes. Bar I think a barbecue peep would taste really good. I know that sounds crazy. I'm sorry, but. Lulu, hello. <clears throat> We're talking peeps, Lulu. Just uh, seeing if people like them, if they love them, if they have a preferred flavor. While I was letting my, um, cow's ears kind of you know have you seen the picture of peeps on a pizza no we don't do that here <laughs> i don't think that would be good all right let me get these ears going do some bunny ears since snoopy's head is dry we're just gonna we're gonna make him look like he's going for a quick jog real quickly really quickly jogging through the spring time here season Let's get physical. 
was it is it Gene Simmons, Richard, which was the guy back in like the eighties or whatever, like that that um barbecue peeps. Yeah, well, Phil, you wouldn't know. <clears throat> you don't know if it would taste good or not because you've never never had a peep. So, but I'm just saying, maybe might be a thing. Um, what was that guy that used to do all those exercise? Like he was like really smiley. He had an afro, and he was just like. Simmons wasn't his last name Simmons but I get him confused with like the kiss rock star <laughs> what was his name gosh he made all those videotapes that you could buy <clears throat> Richard Simmons that's right Mrs. R2 thank you thank you so much that would have driven me crazy I I can't stand when I cannot remember things mighty donut what mighty do mighty donut <laughs> You are the crazy person who puts ketchup on your pizza. But a lot of people do that for whatever ungodly reason. Um, I do say that I enjoy ranch with my pizza. Not all the time, but when I'm splurging, when I'm feeling the need, I will. Um, I like if you put the green Tabasco sauce. I could drink that stuff all day. Um, <laughs> but if you put the green Tabasco sauce with the ranch, with pizza. Peeps expand in the microwave. Oh. By your use of the quotation marks, I'm going to assume it's a very dramatic expansion. <laughs> I've watched videos where people try to destroy peeps because they seem to be indestructible. Peeps on pizza is a crime. Phil, not pine them. <laughs> uh oh. Pizza and pineapple, pizza and ketchup. Like it's it's gonna be the never ending debate. I like um, like white Alfredo pizza too. From time to time, I'll mix that up. Got one ear. This one's going to go in front of this one over here. Just kind of go for it. Do it. It's slightly bigger, so I need to increase the size of the other one for consistency. I don't like this shape anyway. It's a cartoon, so things can be obnoxious. <laughs> Pineapple and pizza with pepperoni and chicken. I would have thought ham would be more appropriate with pineapple. Okay, we got some bunny ears for Snoopy. Let those dry a little bit. We'll go over to Sir Woodstock and do it. And I'm sure we've all talked about this on Twitter from time to time, but like favorite kind of pizza. Mine is the meats. I just want all the meat on my pizza. I want all the sausages, pepperoni. I want ham, like all the ham, all the bacon. I want the hamburger. <laughs> I want all the meat. My perfect pizza is all the meats with olives and mushrooms. I'm, I'm simple simple. <laughs> Jay says, I eat everything. <laughs> Not nochi. Not really fond of the nochi. Then I am a cartoon character. I mean, I put on an eat what you do. You do. Which, that's coming, Phil. The Bunker Bunnies video is coming soon to a YouTube channel near you. Yes, Lulu, meat lovers with the addition of um uh mushrooms and olives and if i could have my way i would have all the olives i would have all the black all the green the purple i'd have it all avocados on pizza i've never seen that before phil but i would eat it i do enjoy avocados a lot super fruit All right. Hmm. 
Meat lovers. Barbecue chicken. Closely followed by meat lovers. You're right, Kaylee. I don't like pizza. Uh, uh, I don't like ketchup on pizza because it overwhelms the sauce. Um, people, <laughs> this is how you know people don't cook anymore. Um, people, when they make the argument of putting ketchup on pizza, they will say, well, what's the difference? Because it has tomato sauce on it. It's like, yes. You don't understand the difference between tomato sauce and ketchup. Tomato sauce does not have vinegar in it. Uh, so, I mean, that's a heavy ingredient. <laughs> so when you put vinegar in it, it really tends to overwhelm everything. Um, and it kind of makes all the, all the essence of the other spices null and void. So all that hard work you did in, in you know, getting all of your basil and your oregano... What for? Because now there's just nothing but tomato vinegar on there. I'm going to put some lightness on the inside here. This is not totally dry, but that's okay because it'll blend. Blend, blend, just a little bit. I love homemade sauce. That's one of my favorite things to do. It's the one recipe that I can make by heart. Uh, I don't need a card or anything. I don't need to follow a YouTube tutorial. I did learn how to make pasta sauce from a YouTube tutorial, but now I no longer need said YouTube tutorial. Oh, that is, oh, that is it, Dreamy Tabitha. Doesn't like ketchup on pizza? We can't be friends anymore. Well, sorry, you're, you're lost, Phil. Sorry. I prefer to cook over baking myself. I mean, I like, I like making cookies. Cake. Eh, it's all right. I like cake, but I'd rather make cookies. I'm really looking forward to Christmas this year. I know. I'm. It's April. I'm talking about Christmas. But I, I am looking forward to gingerbread season. Um, after making my Stargate last year, I'm like, the sky's the limit. What am I going to do next? If you guys have any suggestions for me, that would be awesome. I I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I have so many ideas, and I'm going to need to narrow it down so that I can already start preparing mentally for it and making my templates. But, uh, oh, I'm so excited. I would really love, really love to make King Triton's realm from the little mermaid i would love to make the castle and the coral wreaths and everything basically make a diorama but i have a habit of trying to do too much so i'm thinking of some kind of structure i had thought about maybe the star destroyer um there's there's these popular paintings of country houses moms like to buy defaced by the inner with stormtroopers and walkers burning houses. It sounds like my, my cup of tea. I tend to do dark things. Not intentionally, they just do. Um, I'm, I recommend a lot, you guys, in this chat and Instagram. I recognize a lot. Oh, you recommend. Okay. My mom makes some of the best cookies ever. If we ever meet in real life, Tabitha, I have to give you some of my mom. Mom's cookies are always the best cookies. Happy Easter, Rex G007, Snoopy and the Peanuts is one of my favorites. My mom loves Snoopy too. Who doesn't love Snoopy? <clears throat> Evil. I just noticed your hat. Nice. Yes, I got my little bunny ears in the queue. It's so adorable. It's so it's awful when you're a creative and um, crafty person, guys, because I saw this hat, and it doesn't help if you're a penny pincher either. Um, I saw this hat. And I loved it. And I'm like, I want it. But then I looked at it. I'm like, do I really want to spend money? I could make that. I could make. And that's, that's, you'll hear all kinds of crafty people. I could make that. I don't need to buy it. But I mean, you end up spending more money and more time. It's just, there's something within each of us that's just like, I could make that. <laughs> Rather than just buy it. But I love this hat. I think I might wear it to church tomorrow. I'm not sure. But I will wear it tonight. People are talking. I don't know what to do. My mom had one. I told her. Then she asked why. And I told her they were evil. Okay. 
So she said, keep the figures, keep them away from the painting. Sounds like an interesting story. Okay. Well, Let's Talk is still drying over here. So we're going to go ahead and start finishing off Sir Snoopy. Everything will just kind of, it's amazing, this outline. First, we had talked about the little bump on the forehead, but this outline, guys, is what really makes it just... Oh. You always can pick up cute things in the dollar store sometimes, especially for holidays. Yeah, dollar store has stepped it up quite a bit in the last couple of years. But yeah, I can't really figure out what I want to make for... I do. I have to start this early, guys, to prepare for what I'm going to make for Christmas because I need to start on my gingerbread houses in the beginning of November in order... Thank you, Kaylee. Um, in order to have time because my gingerbread, my Stargate gingerbread uh, gate, I mean, that... On top of my nerd church, that took like a week and a half or more. And that was like doing it every day for hours. So here we go. I'm just going to go make Snoopy's nose. I tend to always start with the nose. So that way I know every where everything else needs to go. Part of me, like I had said before, kind of just wants to make like a scenery rather than an actual structure of gingerbread. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I mean, like a jungle scene would be really cool too, like the Jungle Book and have like Mowgli and uh, Bagheera and stuff like that in there and have the vines. Like that would be so cool. Here we go. We've got two eyes. Do I have a favorite Easter movie? No. Because I wasn't... I was talking to Dan the other day. So if you guys don't know, I also do movie reviews on Inside the Booth. And my co-host's name is Dan. And we were talking about Easter films. Because we are doing Easter review tomorrow evening at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <clears throat> and, um, you know, if you guys know me, I'm not a huge fan. I know I'm, I'm religious and all that stuff. I love Jesus, but I'm just really not into religious films. Not really. They tend to be cheesy. But, you know, Dan wanted to do something, and I'm like, okay, so we're going to watch Hop or review Hop tomorrow. I've never seen it. Hopefully it's good. The Ten Commandments, I don't really count as an Easter film because it's not it has nothing to do with the resurrection of, of Christ. So, <clears throat> I love watching the movie Hop. Okay, that lets me know you have you, you have good taste, Kaylee, so I'm going to trust you. This is going to be a good movie. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, I've watched The Ten Commandments, don't get me wrong. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. I just, I don't count it as an Easter film. And um, the older movies are okay. The older religious films like Ben Hur, um, Samson and Delilah, and all that stuff, I can watch them because it's classic cinema, but it's not really my go to thing. I do the same thing. I see a cool piece of art. I want that. Oh, I can make that. Yeah. We're just going to come around the river bend here. I'm going to clean this line up a little bit. We're going to make Snoopy. Happy? His eyebrows always look a little notorious. <clears throat> Can never get them exactly right, but that's okay because our face goes through many expressions. One day I'll have to do a stream if I do it by myself where I paint something that I really would love to paint, like a magical world or something like that. Characters are fine. I do love trying to paint humans. That takes way too long. <laughs> that might be fun. Might be more interesting. It's really just kind of about hanging out. My mom is crafty. She can make anything. Little Spidey, your mom is so gifted. 
in many ways. <clears throat> She's a lovely lady. But I tell you what, her designs and the way, you know, she cuts out the stickers and everything, like, she's got a gift. She makes people happy with her gift. And that's good. I used to watch Passion of the Christ, like, hurt, like, hurt me, hurt me. But now I listen to thrash metal when I sleep. Good for you. I have never, dare I say it, I have never seen The Passion of Christ. Kaylee Kuoku is in the movie Hop, I believe. Okay. I love her. In... <laughs> I love the Big Bang Theory. Hmm. Hello, Derek. Let's see. Yeah, you guys had brought up the Ten Commandments. I think that movie is so amazing and well made. <clears throat> Excuse me. But this the one scene where if you know the story of Moses and everything, but the, story, the one scene where Charlton Heston's character, Moses, sees the burning bush where, you know, God's going to talk to him and reveal his purpose and his plan. Like he sees the burning bush and then proceeds to walk for like eight days up a mountain and then into a cave in order to see it. So that part, I don't understand. Oh my gosh. It is a very long movie, but you know, those old classics, they took their time. Okay. They took their time with those films, like Sound of Music, like I said, Ben Hur, Cleopatra. Oh my gosh. Cleopatra. Love that movie. Um, such good movies. I'm always amazed by the murals that are, that they painted depicting the scenes because they were just so beautiful, so detailed. <clears throat> the Passion of the Christ is a tough movie to watch, but a necessary. I don't know if that's true, but uh, kind of like Schindler's List. Oh, I get you. <clears throat> well, I read the Bible and that brings me to tears sometimes, so I think I'll be all right. But, you know, I've heard things like a lot of people say it's a good movie. Big Bang Theory is hilarious. Second favorite comedy after Seinfeld. I, I actually prefer Big Bang Theory over Seinfeld, although I do enjoy Seinfeld. I'm just going to fill in these ears in a wonky way, the way that the cartoon is, because they're not really filled in. We're almost done, guys. Okay, look at Snoopy coming together here. Like I said, I see some things, some things that I would prefer not to be there, but I'm okay. We're making it. It's all right. It's just been fun hanging out, learning about your peep preferences and pizza preferences, what you do for Easter. Thank you for sharing. I love hearing stories like that. Yeah. If I were to go back and fix this, I'd make Snoopy a little bit shorter about yay. Yay. But <laughs> soft kitty, warm kitty, little ball of fur. Happy kitty, sleepy kitty. Purr, purr, purr. Okay. I'm thinking of attempting next month to have more than one painting stream. Hopefully that works out. 
Should be fun. I've really enjoyed these. And again, thank you so much for being here and supporting. And just it's just amazing to me. I really, I really, it really touches me. It really does. You guys are wonderful people. Some of you I interact with regularly on Twitter. Some awesome people. <clears throat> I won't spoil the movie for you, Tabitha. Thank you, Kaylee. I draw Snoopy all of the time. My kids loved it. Oh, where'd it go? My kids loved it when they um, when they were bored waiting in lines at the restaurants. Yeah, absolutely. In Passion of Christ, Jesus falls into a pit at one point, and there's this white furry beast like the Klingon attack dog used in Ro Ropenthe ST Star Trek 6. No idea what the heck that... Okay. I have no no context for that. I mean, I love me some Star, Star Trek, but <laughs> I don't understand. I actually celebrate Easter next Sunday. Orthodox Christ here. Okay. As a person who was on the panel... Yeah, Phil was my, my first YouTuber on here. As a person who was on the panel getting taught how to paint, it is a blast. It is fun. It is a lot more fun, in my opinion, uh, having a guest on. It's kind of fun to hang out too. Um, because I was not mentally prepared, um, hopefully you haven't minded me just kind of breezing through this with my conversation because <laughs> I didn't know I didn't have anything lined up because I was meant to be talking to somebody else. They show Elizabeth Taylor's Cleopatra on FX movie all the time. As a matter of fact, it's airing right now. I'm watching Bugs Bunny cartoons. So hey. We ha I have it um on Blu-ray. A wonderful piece. But let us know what you think about the movie afterwards. Of course, tomorrow night, Kaylee, we're going to be talking about it on Inside the Booth, you know? Letting people know what our thoughts are. I don't have a lot of familiarity with Easter movies. Um, I'm going to rinse my brush out here. I never like leaving my detail brushes in the water because of the fact that they're meant to stay nice and pointy. And if you leave them resting like this for too long, it damages the tip. And brushes, bristles, they're our friends. But here's our little Snoopy painting. As you can see, it's different from the original painting, but it's still fun, still recognizable as Snoopy. And uh, also, it makes a difference, guys, if you are sitting, standing, if you are painting like upwards like so, or flat, lying flat down. Um, all of that goes into it. And because I didn't want to get in the way of the camera, that also, I noticed that that's one reason why my body, the Snoopy's body, is elongated. It's because of my my perception here. So all things to take into consideration. And I do that. Sometimes I do that on purpose just so that you guys can see all of this goes into creating artwork. Um, it's not always perfect. It's not always beautiful. It's not always the way you turn out. It turns out, but it is kind of just a, a happy little thing to do a nice little decoration piece. And just enjoy it. You know, you can always learn something new. And this today was just to hang out with you guys. Like I said, next time I do this, I would love to put the supply list um, out there ahead of time on Twitter and stuff like that. So if you wanted to paint along with me, you could. Um, that would be really awesome. Love having students try to teach them how to discover hidden talents, maybe. Or just, just have a good time. Just kind of breathe. Art does that for us. <laughs> I paint upside down like a bat. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> there are some people, you joke, but there are some people that go to great extremes to create artwork. I am not one of these people. Like the most extreme thing I do when I draw or paint is <laughs> sit outside, <laughs> maybe. Um, but anyway, thank you so much guys for, for being here. That was just kind of a fun, just kind of a fun, little morning activity. Thank you again so much for hanging out with me. You can, of course, continue to follow along in my artistic journey. I've got some cool stuff coming out. Doing some traveling now with my artwork. I am. I recently went out into the woods um, and drew some, some waterfalls, some little cascade waterfalls, and had a great time out in the forest, and then something horrendous happened. Oh, yes, it did. I'll be telling a story in my next video that's coming out. Uh, my next travel video. Um, Tabitha was sad. 
She may or may not have kicked a couple of trees in anger and frustration. <laughs> so, come along for that journey so you can be sure to like and subscribe because, because. If I was watching this video, I would like it. I would like the video and I would probably subscribe because this is so thoroughly entertaining and also well executed. It's a, it's not a request. It's not a request. And you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram where I post snippets, different snippets of upcoming projects that I work on. I've got one that I'm hoping to work on today. Just a little side gig that's kind of current, the, the theme that's kind of current in the, the Twitterverse right now. And anybody who sees it will know what it's all about. But um, yeah, again, I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Let me check out the comment section one more time just to see how everybody's doing. An angry tree or Tabitha? Yes. Let me see here. You should do some art shows. I thought that's what this was. You met Bigfoot. My brother saw Bigfoot. Um, poor trees. Yeah. I know. I had to calm down. But I'll tell you the story. What happened? That maybe, hopefully, that video will come out um, next week if I find the time. I'm, I'm, I'm busy, guys. I'm getting busy. Um, it was quite the story quite the story. The poor trees. Yep. Have a wonderful day, Tim. Thank you, Holocron Library Fox. Thank you for being here. Angry Tabitha, I want to see that. You don't get to see me angry, but you do get to see me distraught. Walking in the rain, drenched. Um, that would be really cool to paint or draw along with you, Tabitha. I really would like to take up doing art again. I have all the supplies now. just need to get going. I can post art on Instagram. That would be awesome, Rex. So yeah, the next couple of things that are coming, uh, uh, streams that are coming up next month for painting, I'll put the supply list out there on Instagram and Twitter and uh, would love for you to join along. That would be so cool. Uh, amazing stream like always. Thank you, Kaylee. You're so sweet. Um, I'm happy I wasn't those treats. Yes, that's right, Phil. When Tabitha gets angry, she does express herself and that's why she does a very, she works very hard. Holy Spirit. Has to work hard with them. I can be a very aggressive person. <laughs> Used to be. Jesus knows. Um, great stream. Thank you. Need to have you back on the show. Sure. That would be great, Alan. And I promise I won't cheat this time. Um, <laughs> first time catching the stream. Loved it. Follow you on Instagram. Thank you. It's been fun having you here. Art shows in person. Oh, art festivals. Um, I used to go to vending events and sell my artwork and things like that. And I've been to like a church and I did like art as people worship. That was really cool. I would love to do stuff like that again. That was really cool. Um, are you sure that Dan didn't show up with you? Heard his name is Bigfoot. Not anymore. Ever since he shaved. Justin Proper. Good morning. How are you today? Justin may or may not be on the stream at some point. Just throw that out there. Um, working on his art project. Great job. Have a wonderful evening. You too, Polly. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Wait, you filmed yourself walking in the rain completely drenched. I did. I needed to someone to talk to. So I talked to my camera. It's coming. It's not all sad, but it's coming. <laughs> Thank you, little Spidey. Always good to see you and showcase your artwork and what amazing talent and skill that you have, my friend. Um, you know, there are these new line of products called umbrellas that might help in those situations. Okay, Justin, really quickly here. It was not raining when I went, and I was going to leave when it started raining, okay? But I lost something very important. Exactly, you need context. This is a cliffhanger. It's, it's alluding to something, okay? I'm not giving you all the story. You have to watch the video to find out why Tabitha was sadly walking in the woods, kicking trees. <laughs> <laughs> when it wasn't meant to be a good day. So anyway, guys, thank you again so much for being here. It's been, it's been really great. It's such an honor, such a pleasure. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a happy, happy Thanksgiving and, uh, or not Thanksgiving. What did I say Thanksgiving for? I'm not sure. I'm looking at something here. Easter. Easter. Goodbye. <laughs>